Javier Espinosa, CEO and founder of Dynamate. Welcome on board. How about you? Hi, good afternoon. I'm good afternoon. Uh, great, great to be here. It's a pleasure. So we have been watching a lot of uh, BI and RMS for uh, rooms, accommodations. Now we need to understand more how to optimize revenue for restaurants. And this uh, is going to be really interesting. This is going to be actually also the last pitch. I leave the word to you. You can share the screen and, and get your pitch up. Okay. Thank you so much. And so, okay. Mm. So let's get ready. So we can do also up to three questions at the end of this pitch because it's the last. Okay, Christine. Here we are. So you have to get the PowerPoint up. Yes, uh, you can start, man. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. All right. So first, let's look at the reality. And the reality is that today, total revenue management is like sex when you are a teenager. Everyone talks about it. Nobody really knows how to do it. But everyone thinks everybody else is doing it. Because we have been talking about total revenue management for many, many years. But today, the reality is that 70% of total revenue management by a hotel is coming from rooms. And there are many, many uh, platforms and uh, a lot of technologies and, and, and vendors and, uh, that actually uh, utilize their, their technology and their algorithms in the best way in order to optimize uh, this uh, room revenue uh, space, uh, such as uh, some examples are, of course, uh, Duero, Beyond Price, Ideas, Atomize. Some of them, we have been listening to them during this uh, afternoon session, and they are uh, using cutting edge uh, technology uh, that basically uh, has uh, you know, no competition. Uh, but the remaining 30% of revenue that is called uh, or that we uh, like to call as other revenue, uh, because it's everything that has nothing to do uh, with rooms uh, in the hotel industry uh, has uh, no or poor uh, technology to support a proper optimization and has not had it, uh, you know, in the last years, even though we have been talking about total revenue management. Uh, so what we do in Dynamit is we optimize other revenue to apply a total revenue management strategy for hotels. Starting with f &B, so starting with the restaurant space. Applying in particular two uh, levers. One, dynamic pricing, and second, smart menus. Uh, dynamic pricing is basically about uh, adapting the price of every dish uh, depending on the demand level in order to improve uh, profitability and product mix. And smart menus is all about adapting your digital menu at the restaurant, personalizing and making it dependent also on the demand level and of the and on the type of customer that you have in your uh, restaurant or in your F&B outlet again in order for customers to purchase what it's most important uh, for the restaurant to be sold. Uh, now we have a clear product roadmap where we want to include in our platform uh, breakfast optimization, optimizing pricing for breakfast and dynamizing pricing for breakfast is crucial for hotels. The same for room service, where it comes as well to personalizing uh, the offer that we have in every room, depending on the customer and depending on the demand level. And then, and then also for restaurants, uh, we want to work on the delivery platforms. We want to optimize the delivery uh, channel, uh, focusing on uh, restaurants. But really, what we are doing today, uh, what we offer to those uh, uh, restaurants and hotels that are using our platforms, we offer an increase of 10 to 15% in profitability using our platform. And this has been tested and it's what we are getting in the customers that have been using our platforms in the past uh, approximately year and a half. Uh, this is an example from one premium outlet uh, located in the city center of Madrid after just uh, nine months uh, using uh, Dynamite. They went from a contribution margin per customer uh, of 11.7 euros up to a contribution margin per customer of 18 euros, of course, without impacting the demand at all of the restaurant. So this is pure uh, benefit and pure contribution margin going straight to the bottom line. That's 44K just thanks to the implementation of Dynamite in just nine months, which is, of course, huge. Who is working with us today? Uh, who are our customers? Uh, we are proud to say that uh, in the hotel space, uh, we are working with Radisson Hotels, we are working uh, with uh, Palladium. Uh, we are working uh, with the Smart Rental uh, a group with over uh, 10 properties. Uh, then on the restaurant space, uh, 
Uh, we are working with La Rumba Group, uh, with uh, Grupo La La La. They are both, they are both based in, in, in Spain, big restaurant uh, groups. And then with Grupo Arzabal, which was our first uh, customer back in 2020. Uh, but these are just some, some examples. And the best, uh, the best ones that can talk about uh, what Dynamite is and what it can bring to them is basically our customers and industry leaders. Uh, Gianni Di Fede, Senior Vice President of Revenue Management, BI and Distribution for Radisson, uh, says being able to control and centralize our f and pricing thanks to a platform like Dynamite is a very important leap for us. Fernando Vivers, Chief Commercial Officer of Ace Hotel Group, the customer is ready. We need to counterfight inflation and incremental cost. Dynamic pricing is the smartest solution. And then, of course, uh, we couldn't uh, avoid, you know, including some uh, testimonials from what was our first customer and the first believer on, a, on dynamic pricing uh, for F&B outlets uh, for us, which is Nacho Adorna, the CEO of Rupert Zabal, uh, which mentioned that their profitability had grown by 30 percent uh, thanks to uh, the implementation of our platform. And the best news is uh, you can try for free. Uh, our platform is available for a free pilot but only for the doers. Uh, if you want to try our platform uh, for free during the first month, uh, you have to confirm your interest uh, before uh, the 15th of December. Thank you so much uh, for uh, your time and for the invite, of course. So we can try it for free also the food, Javier? <laughs> I wish. Test make sure we are on track. You know? <laughs> All right. Excellent, excellent presentation, Javier. Um, and I think uh, it was all sitting, uh, I think it was always wishful thinking, a lot of the things that you said there for quite a few of us. And I'm sure uh, a few very interesting questions will come out of this session. Um, so, shall we start with Pierre? Do you have Art. a question? I think the yes. first one, yeah. For sure. Hi, Xavier. Thank you for a good presentation. Uh, I have one question. Uh, I have actually two profit managers working for me, only with FMB uh, at the moment. Uh, and the same road as we all did with, uh, with the room revenue for, yeah, maybe 15, 20 years ago, we start getting older, is that it's a lot of bad data. Uh, when we when we get to these big machines or hotels that we have, when we should start working with F and B revenue and do like menu engineering things like that, we can we can see like a famous beer mark could be in the system in twenty five different ways. It could spell it with two L and one L and up and down. What's your point on that one? Because I think uh, what we could do with your system and things like that in our two hundred twenty five hotel is amazed, but our data is so pure in many ways. How did you sort it out with other companies? And is it a long way to start using the system because you need to do a lot of work on the back office? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right, uh, Thank you for, your, for the question. Uh, and that's a, that's a great point. Now, um, the reality is that uh, the, the lack of consistency on how you input uh, the data, which happens to basically everyone, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's an issue when you want to consolidate the data, right? When you want to look at, at uh, reporting, for example, on an aggregated level, and you want to look at how many Cokes you sold at the global scale, uh, scale right? For example. You have Coke with a K and a C in yeah. every yeah. different way. Yeah, true. <laughs> exactly. Uh, now, if you uh, are working at the hotel level or at the outlet uh, level, uh, usually, you know, unless it's very messy, but usually there is only one product uh, for, 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 every, for every item, right? Uh, and this is how our algorithm works. Basically, we work everything at the outlet level. Uh, and at the outlet level, it should be, <laughs> right? Yeah. Perfect, but thank you. Uh, I think I'm gonna have somebody calling you <laughs> in some days. That's great. That's what we like right. to hear, Shumi. Uh, sorry, let me. Uh, let me close my, uh, sorry, uh, give me just one second. Uh, also, part um, regarding your question, we have a partnership. In, in case you are interested on, you know, the consolidated thing, uh, we have a partnership with a with an artificial intelligence uh, and reporting platform uh, that as well provide you know that service of you know consolidating the, the information just in case you are interested we get nothing out of it it's just a partnership that we can help you out with okay thank you 
Um, hi, uh, I'm, I'm interested in the analytics behind the dynamic pricing. So what are the variables um, that drive the pricing? You know, for example, you know, is it is it inventory? Is it time of day, seasonality? Um, do you do measure some kind of uh, elasticity of demand? Um, and if so, what's the time period of data that you take in order to, you know, drive a robust uh, um, uh, price decision upload? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Sumi, for your for your question. So, um, to be honest, uh, you know the the different variables that are impacting pricing and how uh, we should uh, measure them and take them into account. It's uh, it was a learning process for us because we were coming from the hotel industry, right? At the beginning, we knew nothing about restaurants, and the first thing that we learned was that the name of the is entirely different. Uh, when you talk about uh, pricing for hotels, we are always talking about revenue management. It has not been until recently that we have started talking about uh, net revenue management and profit. But when it comes to restaurants, there is a huge element that you can impact when playing uh, with the menu and when optimizing product mix, right? So therefore, the name of the game is completely different and you need to look for profitability. How do you look for profitability? Well, there are many variables, right? The first one you need to take into account is, of course, price elasticity, the popularity of every dish, how they react to price changes. Uh, then you need to take into account the contribution margin for every item, uh, the stock in case you have it, because the reality is that many restaurants do not keep track of it. Uh, and then an element that is crucial for us and is the preparation speed. Because for example, if your restaurant is uh, full of people or you are expecting to have the restaurant full of people, it would be very interesting to have your menu uh, only uh, showing dishes that are uh, fast to be, to be cooked, nice. right? or at least to provide them better visibility, right? So that customers are uh, more willing to purchase those those items to improve table rotation and to improve the efficiency mm -hmm. of the kitchen, right? So all those elements are taken into account into our algorithms, uh, but we always say that we do it in a holistic approach. So for example, at a certain stage, our algorithms may recommend that you uh, increase the price of the hamburger Maybe not to get more money out of the hamburger, but maybe because the customers that are buying the hamburger are not purchasing the steak. And maybe the steak has a better profitability than the hamburger, right? So sometimes, you know, our algorithms take into account the cannibalization between different items, and they are going to suggest uh, price changes and menu changes that take that into account in order to optimize the profitability of the entire menu. Okay. Especially if you have the steak rare, so it doesn't take long to cook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you thank you that's very insightful thank you brilliant question shumi um roxanne how about um our second lady in the show today yes so now i'm imagining all of these price changes for menus that are coming up and a lot of restaurants still have printed menus and um, this obviously stops you from being able to change those prices as regularly or as you would say for instance your hotel rooms um how are you doing that sort of how are you getting these prices in front of the guests mm -hmm. yeah so um basically you know we have uh, our main way of sh of showing the, can you hear the... Me? yeah yeah can you hear me roxanne can you hear me thank you hello we can hear you fine, Javier. Okay, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, okay. So um, yeah, the, the main way to show our menu, uh, it's uh, via QR code, right? It's for customers yes, to I can. see it. Thank you. Ah, okay, great. Uh, so the, the, the way to show the, the menu, uh, the main way is to show it with a QR code, right? With the, uh, with the digital menu being shown on the, on, the, on the cell phone from the customer, right? But then we have two, uh, let's say, backup uh, plans uh, in case uh, any in case a customer doesn't feel comfortable with that. On one hand, uh, many uh, restaurants that we are working with, uh, they have tablets as a backup pl plan. Again, in case a customer doesn't feel comfortable with the digital menu, right, uh, on, on their cell phone, uh, or in case they don't have Wi-Fi or internet connection or whatever, they can always use uh, the, this, guy, this uh, device. Uh, and then we have a second <laughs> backup plan, uh, which is that restaurants have the ability uh, from our platform to print straight away uh, the current menu, right? So if any customer uh, do not want the digital menu, uh, eat neither in their cell phone, neither in tablet, uh, the restaurant owner can go click a button in our platform and print a copy of, of, of the current menu with the prices that are uh, 
uh, available at that moment. Fantastic. I, I have another question. The, the, it's, it's just a curiosity. It could be comparable the lineup of uh, your menu dishes to the room type, right? That's the concept. Javier? Mm, I mean, so if I'm having, you... uh, having uh, you know, uh, oysters, it's the sweet, for example, and, or if I'm getting the hamburger, it's the executive kind of room type. <laughs> um could be in a way could be in a way because in the end you have the customer sitting there and you can influence on 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 what they are purchasing right the same way you are influencing you, you can influence on customer purchasing a suite or you can influence influence on a customer purchasing a standard yeah it could be sort of comparable in a way yeah yeah that's i think i think this is the way you can translate this rms traditional from the room point of view to the you know, tables and dishes and so on. Anyway, I was able to have a proper demo of your platform from uh, one of your uh, team member, Alessio, and really impressed me. The, the tool was really interesting. So if anyone interested in restaurant uh, revenue maximization, I strongly suggest guys to get in touch with Javier and, uh, and request a demo. And then uh, find out if the free trial is also available for the food cost, right? <laughs> 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 okay, thank you, Javier. Really glad to have you here today, and uh, I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.